Welcome to Beit Bashra. I'm Bashra and this is my home. Today we're making kibbe. So kibbe is a the national dish of Syria, I would say. Um, it's also very popular in other countries like Lebanon and Iraq. I've seen it in Turkish cuisine and in Armenian cuisine and in Afghan cuisine. Of course, different versions of it. So we're gonna make the Syrian kibbe today. We're going to make fried kibbe and I'll show you what kibbe lebanese looks like. It's like a, a kibbe dumpling in yogurt sauce. So kibbe has two parts. It has the dough and it has the filling. And so we're gonna start with the filling first because you wanna give it time to cool down before you fill it. To make the kibbe filling, you're going to need two things. You're going to need the ground meat and the onions. So a traditional meat filling will be ground lamb or you can also do ground beef and you'll need two to three onions for this amount. If you wanna go up a level or go more fancy, you can put all the things that we put um, in our filling and that is seven spices, dried mint, olive oil, pomegranate molasses, pine nuts, and walnuts. So you wanna start by toasting the pine nuts in a little bit of oil. You can also dry toast these if you don't, if you wanna cut back on the oil, but we toasted ours, um, we toasted our pine nuts in some vegetable oil. And then once they get nice and golden, you wanna take them off the heat and spread them apart a little bit so they can cool down. Next, in the same pan, you're going to put in your diced onions and you can dice the onions either by hand or through a food processor. And once the onions have um, shrunk a lot, became translucent, then you can add the meat. So we all always do the onions first and then the meat because the onion juice is going to go into the meat and make it taste tastier. <laughs> also, the onions will kind of disappear so you don't see them so much. So my mom likes to add a little bit of water here. You can see her add a few tablespoons of water to the meat and that will help the meat uh, break apart and not be so clumpy. And then once the meat is fully cooked, to the beef, you want to add your favorite spices. A traditional um, Arab spice would be like a seven spice or allspice and salt and black pepper. Black pepper is very important to keep the filling. For us, like I said, we like to make things a little bit extra fancy, so we have extra ingredients. We like to add dried mint, uh, fresh olive oil after cooking, pomegranate molasses for that tangy taste, and of course you want to then add the rest of your pine nuts and you can add some uh, walnuts. The walnuts we did not toast, you want to just put them in raw. The only thing is that you cannot add almonds. So almonds is not a substitute for kibbe, um, not traditionally, so I would stay away from adding almonds but walnuts is good and if you want to do the extra step you can also add some pine nuts look at the kibbit filling we have here it's so juicy it's so shiny from the olive oil you want to taste it and see what um is what's missing from it if you want a little bit of heat you can add oh i did forget i forgot to tell you we add um spicy pepper flakes so either you can put like a spicy pepper paste or a spice or a spicy pepper flakes the red ones um and it gives it a little bit of extra heat I think it's super delicious in kibbe. So that's a really fun way to do the filling. If you like, again, you can just do the basic meat and onions. You should taste it at this point, and if you're totally in love with it, just set it aside to cool so we can work on the dough. This is the filling for the yogurt kibbe, or the fried kibbe, or the baked kibbe. If you're trying to do a kibbe mishuyeh, which is like a kibbe, like a grilled kibbe, um, it does not have that the same filling. So if you're looking for that recipe, you can check out my blog post for more information on that. So the kibbe dough, the casing, the outside of the kibbe, is made with very minimal ingredients as well. You need actually three main ingredients. You're gonna need some bulgur or cracked wheat. You're gonna need some onions and you're gonna need some very, very, very lean meat. So we're gonna start with the bulgur. And burgal, burgal, I don't know how to say this word in English. <laughs> so if this is your first time working with kibbe, my suggestion is to use the lighter bulgur. And this is the same bulgur that we use in my tabbouleh video. So if you have not checked out my tabbouleh video, it's there in the eye. This is the fine, the finest bulgur that you can find in the store. And um, as you can see, it's a very light color. We're gonna use this whole bag and it's a thousand grams, it's a kilo. And we're going to wash it a couple of times and then drain the water from it. You shouldn't put this through, through a sieve. It will go straight through the, the sieve, unless you have a super fine mesh sieve. But you can just kind of pour all the water out like we're doing here. Whatever like little water is left over, you should just let the bulgur soak in that water. So it's gonna be damp, but it's not going to be soaking wet um, or like sitting in water. So that is the bulgur soaking. It should drink up all of the water. You wanna leave it to the side. 
We'd like to do this step first and then do the filling and then come back to the, to, the, to the bulgur. You will also need one small onion. And so my mom likes to peel it and chop it and put it over the bulgur. And then she puts some salt and pepper on top so that um, the salt will bring the onion juices out. But because she, she put the salt and pepper on top and it's leaking into the bulgur, that onion juice will go into the bulgur and give it a little bit of flavor. And then like I said, work on your filling and come back to it. When you come back to the dough, you will notice that it is a little bit, the bulgur has soaked up all the water and some of it is a little bit dry. We might add a cup of water, just put that on the side. Next, we're gonna work on the meat. So I wanted to show you a couple options. When you wanna get the meat for the kibbe case, for the kibbe dough. Usually you wanna to go to the butcher shop and then ask the butcher for the leanest beef that he has um, and then he needs to grind it for you through the meat grinder twice. And that is so that your meat is super, super thin. I wanted to give an option for people who maybe don't have that, um, don't have a butcher shop near near them um, or can't, can't ask for that. You can do this kind of step at home, which is what we did for today's kibbe. And we took six ounces, um, I mean, four, 24 ounces of filet mignon. So we took this filet mignon, these filet mignon fillets, and we put it through the food processor, pulsing in the beginning, and then just really letting it process until the meat is very, very thin. You can see it here, the consistency, what it should look like. Now is the fun part. We're going to make the dough. So the dough can be made Traditionally, it's made in this like giant mortar and pestle and my mom remembers her grandma um, like pounding the kibbe, pounding the bulgur and the meat and the onion all together to create this dough. Now you have other options that you can do. You can either use a food processor or use a meat grinder. Um, also looks like a, we have like a, it's like a meat grinder attachment that you can have with your stand mixer or we have an actual meat grinder machine. So you'll see me use the meat grinder machine here. So the first time you take it through, it looks a little bit dry as the bulgur and the onion processes and you just wanna grind the bulgur into a finer paste. And then the second time you do it, we added a little bit of meat to the, to the bulgur and the onion and it will again make it just a little bit um, smoother and more of a dough type of, more of the kimbe dough cons consistency that we're looking for. After we've processed this twice, you can see here how it looks like. Just take note of the consistency as you're working with the kibbe and you can check back with this video as, as often as you like just to see what if my, that my kibbe is looking like your kibbe. <laughs> Lastly, we put the processed bulgur and onion in this large bowl and we put the meat on top. And this is something usually that um, you'll need a lot of elbow grease for, um, a lot of hand strength, arm strength. You want to knead the meat and the bulgur together. This is the filet mignon meat, remember? into the bulgur until it's completely incorporated. You wanna keep going, use a lot of strength in here. You really want to incorporate these together by hand. It also helps you see if you need to add a little bit of water. You will need to add a cup of water to the bulgur if it's very, very dry. Don't add too much water. Remember, you can always add a little bit more, but you can't take any water away. So be very careful as you're adding the water. Like, the minute how it is, Take part of it. You can take part of it like this. And then we just separate this into smaller portions. So you can separate it. We've separated this into three balls like you see here and then wrap each one in plastic. And you want to let this rest for four hours overnight would be good. If you let it rest completely overnight, it will be easier to work with the next day. Oh, done? Oh, like this? If you're professional, you can do that. If you want to have fun with it, you can do this. <laughs> Done. That's not part of the kibbe. Yeah, is fun, you know? At this point, you can also freeze the kibbe dough balls and you can freeze the filling as well and then thaw them um, before you make your kibbe. So this is a good large recipe because you're not going to go through this process very often. So we make a whole bunch of kibbe dough and a whole bunch of kibbe filling and then we make a little bit that day and then you freeze the rest. So we're gonna shape the kibbe now. You have to have a lot of confidence in yourself 
and it's okay if you mess up and there are other options to shape a kibbeh. Essentially what you just need is to enclose the filling properly so that it doesn't leak in the oil and mess up the entire thing. We're gonna go and we're gonna shape the kibbeh. So in this bowl, I have a teaspoon of salt and a tablespoon of cornstarch and I'm just gonna add some cold water. Probably a cup. Okay, and then I'm also gonna add some ice cubes. So we want this cold, cold water um, so that your hands are cold when you are making the kibbe. Um, it helps the kibbe form its shape well and keep its shape. Okay, so just some ice cubes to keep this cold. This is my kibbe ball. Okay, we let it rest in the fridge overnight. I'm gonna take the plastic off. That's what it looks like. And mom is going to come help teach us how to make the kibbe footballs. And I also have a third item here, the kibbe filling that we made yesterday. So you don't have to make this a day before, but it's nice to know if you have a gathering or if you're trying to make a lot and you want to make this the day before, you can. Um, the important thing is that you need it to be room temperature or cold when you work with it so that when it goes into the kibbe, it stays, um, it doesn't affect the shape of the kibbe. You take water like I do. This is maybe my second time in my life. Okay, and see what the, the yes, good job, okay. Like we, like take, we take a bowl. That's a large You can, whatever size, size you want it. I can make it as big as, you roll it like me. Okay. Okay, still, still like it's not sticking on anything yeah. that you have. And then you take some water mm. under here too, okay. from the same water. Okay. And then you go inside the really hole fun. and you go, you, whatever comfortable. Some people they do it the, the right to the left, some people they do it like me. So whatever comfortable with your I think way I do of like pressing. You. Yeah, but when you do it, you have to make sure you use this part of oh, your really? hand to shape it in a way that it doesn't open. So the mouth is not big, see? Like this. See how you're, yeah, you're, it's a, Okay. That's okay. It's a, it's a practice one. Like you have to work the muscle of both sides. One to make the, ed the edge still keep it like. Uh, where's my, where's my opening so large, this one? Because you have to make control this part of your hand. Up. You can, you can. Okay, now we're gonna stuff it, so. Some people like more, some people like less. I like it this much. And then I, I go check my gently close using my... Yeah, mine is gonna be tiny. This part of my body, my, my hand. Okay, I, you, yeah, you need to try. I'm gonna try. <laughs> okay, so if I, I have to smooth this, I, which I don't, okay. Sitte kantit illi tabatik ahlam tabati. What the? Let me do this again. Like this. Hey, should we do this? Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is. These are our. Okay. In case, yeah. Wait, wait, don't look at it. It's not ready. Going. It's not ready. In, in case, if, <laughs> it's not ready. Hold on. That's fine. You can take the kind of tip, but like it could be. Why is it too much here at the top? Okay, so I want to make it that football shape. Okay. Yeah, honey. What do you think, mom? Yes, yeah, the shape of it is good. Can we show mom's? Can we show her the, show these ones? Can I put mine next to yours? Yeah, Allah, halwe, so cute. Yeah. This is the regular standard size for the Ali, and then she said this is the smaller size is for the kibbe labaniya. The one with the yogurt, yeah. Cooked the yogurt, yogurt one, yogurt. So we were saying that mm. the reason we we chill it. We chill the, the, dough. the dough after we we knead it mm -hmm. because we want it to rest and it will not break basically mm -hmm. when we work with it because it's been kneaded enough and we kneaded it enough. But so it doesn't break, you said. It doesn't break, it doesn't come apart. So I take a little bit and I make sure this part is wet because this is what I'm going to be gently pressing. Gently, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. definitely my hand are warm. So you need the water to be salt. cold enough, especially in the summer, because salt will. Uh, in case I under salted the kibbe, mm -hmm. and uh, because definitely the kibbe will lose some of its salt in the in the frying process. Mm -hmm. So these are the one. Are we gonna try? Another this is one? mine. He's yeah. cute. He's so cute. I know he's mine. 
Okay, I'm gonna just wet this a little bit, not much, mm -hmm. and bring it down. Mm -hmm. Okay, see if it's gonna work because the, the bag is, um, okay, the bag. So you just press the kit back against the side? Yeah, and try to make it go up. Even. Plastic is small, should be bigger. So you stuff it. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we stuffed it. And then we take it out. You can make your bag bigger because definitely the plastic I'm using, it's not that big. So I'm going to keep using the bag to help me close it because I don't know how to, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm new at this. Because of the way it is, because I used the cup to do it, I have to shape it and make it look like the way it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So gently, you press on it and you just, it has to look like its sister, so. Oh. Kind of. This is the one I. This is the one I made by myself. This is the one you made. That's true. That's the first and one. And this is made. the one we used this cup for. That's right. This is the first one. And this mine. one we used this cup for. That's a small one. So this is the one. This is the big cup. Yeah. We've also made the smaller kibbeh shapes, and those are for kibbeh labaniye. So I made a yogurt sauce. Again, you can go on my blog to see exactly what's in the yogurt sauce. But they're just dumplings that you don't fry. You put them exactly as they are. This. Kibbe will kind of float to the top as it's getting close to being fully cooked. And then you want to cook it for maybe five, ten minutes more just to make sure. Um, but it's not going to be crispy. It's a very soft kibbe. The other option you can do with this dough if you don't want to fry it, you can also bake it. But you can't bake it in this shape. Baked kibbe looks like this. Very fancy, I know. At this point, we're going to fry the kibbeh. So editing Bushra here, I wanted to say that you have to use fresh oil when you want to make kibbeh so that it doesn't have any other flavors in it. And also, if you want to check the temperature for the oil, if you put a couple pieces of bread in your oil, when they get nice and crispy, then you're ready to fry. Wow, that's so beautiful. First of all, make sure it's hot, ready, and you put few at a time. You don't put a lot. So you don't cook everything in one. You add, for this, I'm going to put maybe five, maximum six. Wow. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. Thanks, Mom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's okay. You can shape your kibbeh and then put it in the freezer on a tray and once they're frozen you can put them all in a plastic bag and then freeze them for kibbeh whenever you want. If you do that you probably want to take your kibbeh out of the freezer and then fry it immediately from frozen. The only issue here is that sometimes if your entire kibbeh is frozen and then you fry it the filling won't heat up um, by the time the whole thing is fried. So I would say fry it and then put it into a warm oven um, so that it continues to stay crispy on the outside and then the inside will heat up as well. If you like, you can also fry the kibbeh now and then leave it on a tray to cool and then put it in the freezer and then you can take it out and eat it, you know, warm it in the oven or in the microwave whenever you need emergency kibbeh. Oh, it's so gorgeous, Mama. And it's, uh, you have to show, it's you keep the layers, my <laughs> man on man. Yum, look at that. Thank you. I'm so excited you've gotten to this point in the video. <laughs> I'm so excited because this is our taste test right here. I have my last two kibbehs that I um, just fried. And this is my breakfast. It's kind of early, but I'm going to try this on camera with you. <sighs> Kibbeh is so tasty with lentil soup. And um, it's, it's, I can't think anymore. <laughs> and um, I literally forgot what I was gonna say. I don't care anymore. I'm just gonna eat this now. Bismillah. <laughs> the outside 
is so crispy and the inside is just so many different textures and flavors all mixed together i'm not judging you if you only do like a meat and onion filling but if you can add more things why not like that's not to say that regular kibbeh is not good some people love that kibbeh and if that's what you love make it make what you love you should eat what you love this is what i love so this is what i'm eating it's very important to get the case very very thin <laughs> You can see in my trial, I didn't get it that thin. Um, it should be thin, but it should also be very even on the sides. So that's probably the most difficult thing about kibbeh is the shaping part. But wallah, I'm telling you, everything in this kibbeh works so perfectly together. It's that filling that just really makes the kibbeh shine. Of course, it's like mom's special touch of how she like shaped it and how she made it and the outside case and the dough and whatever, but the filling, wow. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here and for choosing my kibbeh recipe as today's video. I'm so honored and I really hope you learned something. If you make kibbeh, please let me know. Let me know either in the comment section below or on Instagram by uploading your picture of kibbeh and therefore I can show it with the world and see what a great job you did. Kibbeh is not an easy thing. And if it's something that you wanna, you know, a challenge that you wanna tackle and you wanna use my recipe, I am very honored. Make sure to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Share the video with your friends and family and I will see you next time, inshallah.